Good. Can't load it when the hammer's ah, back. Of course you can't. Fiddly bugger. <laughs> the shit's a load, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose you get used to it. You get it, you get it sort of halfway in, that's it, beyond that point, then you use the other bullet, just beyond, that's it, then you use it's the other bullet. It's catching on the rim of the cartridge, yeah, isn't use it? Use the other bullet, push that one in. And set the primer off. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, it? Boom. I would, I would have left it at that, but you've got to shut the gate now. How did the cowboys load it up? Yeah, I know. Fast. It's been bloody sight easy in these things. Surely. I don't like pushing the primers. I know it won't do anything, but... That's it, hot. Take it down. Good gun, though. It's nice, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's a fiddly one, isn't it? They ain't easy to load, are they? Gloves on, but without gloves on, it hurts your bloody fingers. It's hurting my fingers. <laughs> it's hurting my fingers through the blooming gloves. It's just catching on that. That's it. Ping. I'll alternate them. Ping. Bringing something a little bit more traditional for you guys. This is the Chiapa 1892 lever action rifle. Carbine, 357 Magnum. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. And we've been having some real good fun with this little thing. Um, real good fun, real good fun. Let me just throw out some specs then I'll and then we'll get stuck in with a review. So, going by uh, Chapper's uh, manual here, I'm gonna read you all the data from out of this. So, 357 Magnum, um, this one's got a 20 inch barrel, uh, that's 50 centimeters, 38 inches total length, or 97 centimeters. Uh, six grooves in the barrel, uh, one in 19 twist rate, um, weighing in at three kilos or 6.6 .6 pounds, and this is 10 plus one. So, 10 shots in the magazine, one in the chamber. Uh, I was running uh, this stuff, PPU ammo. We're fairly limited on ammo, so um, we're mainly shooting steel targets. Um, we did do a bit of paper punching, but uh, our, main, our main thing was um, shooting the steels because it was loads more fun. But yeah, we are just using these sort of wad cutter 357 Magnums, uh, just factory loads. Yeah, they were going nice, you know, it was uh, running really nice with them and it's just a real fun gun to use. 
But let's get stuck in anyway. I mean, this is it. It's basically um, a reproduction of the Winchester 1892 Libra Action Rifle. This one's made by Chiapa, like I said. Um, what a nice looking gun. Really nice looking. To be honest, I'm not a great fan of Libra Action Rifles. Um, and I don't own one. I've never owned one. I've got this one on loan. Um, I don't know, I find with myself, I don't know whether it's been left-handed, I don't know whether it makes any difference to be honest. I just don't find them comfortable to shoot. Um, but this thing really does, it really does feel all right to be honest. It's so lightweight as well and so pointable with it being the carbine. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed using this and I am actually tempted to get one. But anyway, let's get stuck in and we'll uh, we'll talk about this in some detail. We'll go from like this stock end then. As you can see, it is hardwood stock uh, and you've got like this metal, um, well, I wouldn't call it a pad, but uh, it's like the end piece of the stock. Um, that looks nice. It's done in the same sort of uh, finish as the rest of the rifle or carbine. Really does look good. Pistol grip, if you call it a pistol grip on one of these, again, totally straight with it being a traditional uh, looking rifle, you know, in a reproduction of the Winchester. Um, but really comfortable, really comfortable. And then fore end, again, pretty much what you'd expect, <laughs> just hardwood. And then you've got like barrel band here and right at the muzzle end as well, there's a barrel band. But what a lovely looking rifle though, really lovely looking. And it shoots really nice, really nice. Uh, so let's have a look at the actual uh, receiver on it or action. Um, you've got like the, uh, what, what would you call that? Is that the uh, saddle ring? I think they call them the saddle rings. Um, didn't have a horse to hand, so we didn't really <laughs> use that. Um, I don't know what you'd actually use it for. What if you can put in the comments what you actually use a saddle ring for? I think if this was mine, I'd probably put a bit of, uh, I don't know, leather braiding on there or something just for sort of decoration. But, uh, or hang your car keys off it, I don't know. <laughs> but moving along, I mean, this is obviously um, the action, you know, lever action. Uh, no safety catch on this. Uh, it has got half cock though. So if you do sort of half cock it, um, the trigger does lock up, so you can't move the trigger. Uh, so I guess that could kind of be a, a safety uh, device, so to speak. Um, but just a real nice looking rifle. Uh, you know, nothing sort of too rattly about it. Um, you know, it's just it just feels really quite well made. Um, Everything seems solid on it. Um, what I found as well using this rifle, the ejection on it is absolutely amazing. I mean, when you uh, when you sort of operate the lever once you've taken your shot, the shell casings literally go right over your head and behind you. Um, so the the ejection on this thing is pretty pretty damn good. It's probably the the best ejection or probably the furthest ejector. Um, that I've seen on on a rifle, you know, as far as flinging shells, it literally, you know, they must go sort of six foot up in the air if you rack it quite hard. To be fair, we were being a little bit, um, I don't know, what's the word, gentle with this rifle, a little too gentle. Uh, that's probably why we, we weren't feeding uh, very well on a couple of shots. We needed to be a bit more brutal with it. Um, but it is a lone gun, so we were looking after it, trying to take care of it. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a close look at the actual lever. I mean, it's all solid, all done in the same um, sort of finish as the rest of it. Have a look down there as well. Yeah, it looks, looks all good in there, you know, nice and solid and everything. Um, can't really fault it, to be honest. And then there's your, obviously that's where your hammer strikes there, the firing pin. Maybe you can see the other end of it. 
I've actually forgot to put the light on on my uh, camera. Let's just do that while we can. Let's just turn the light on. Yeah, that's better. You might be able to see a bit better. Hope that's made any difference. Sort of seeing the guts there. But what a lovely, lovely rifle. Lovely, lovely rifle. In fact, what we'll do, we'll give it a trigger pull. Uh, for what it's worth, we'll get the trigger gauge out and just see what that trigger is pulling because it is really quite a nice trigger. Um, from what I can remember when I was shooting it, it, it felt really good. But let's give it a pull on the scale just to see exactly what it's doing. Just out of interest. Um, can't really adjust it anyway, so you're pretty much stuck with uh, with what you've got. What you can adjust though, just before I do that, is if you have a look here, one of those screws there, I forget which one it is now, but you can actually adjust the rate that the hammer ha actually hits the firing pin. So if you was having light strikes, uh, for whatever reason, you can adjust that and that'll probably sort of cure any issue that you're having. But the trigger, um, yeah, it is nice. It feels comfortable. It's a nice, smooth blade on it. But let's give it a pull. Just see what it is doing. Obviously, it is empty. The rifle is. Let's see what this thing's doing on the scale. Okay, four pounds. Well, they say four and a half pounds ish, give or take. So not a bad trigger. It just it does feel really nice, I must admit though guys, it's uh, just a nice, nice trigger. Like I was saying though earlier about accuracy, we were just mainly shooting steel targets. Uh, we did say in the video that it was 40, I think it was 40 metres. Uh, no, I think we said 30 yards, but it, when we actually lasered it, it was 40 metres. Um, so, um, and we were hitting like the steel gongs, no problem, uh, you know, pretty much aiming dead on the things and that's straight out of the box you know with no adjustment to the sights I mean the sights are well they're pretty basic um, you know they are this one is adjustable for um, for windage as well by sort of adjusting that screw and basically tilting the turning the uh, the actual um, sight um, so pretty basic I mean keep it traditional keep these on you know but uh, if you want to be a bit more accurate, you probably want to get a better sight. Front one is just a post one, non-adjustable blade on it. And then I'll give you a closer look at the barrel there, the muzzle. Like I said, 10 shot tube magazine. Loading this thing, yeah, a little bit fiddly. Um, you know, it's, I find these, it, can be a bit of a pain in the arse anyway to sort of load you know it's uh, it, to be fair I haven't shot a lot of these and uh, you know it's not a gun that I often sort of uh, you know jump at the chance of shooting um, but uh, you know you guys that use these things will, will be able to load these things really fast but I just found the gate on it a little bit sort of I don't know um, too spring loaded I don't know could that be a bit softer you know and it, I don't know, it's just a bit fiddly loading loading up. I mean, like I said, you guys will probably just ram them in, bullet after bullet after bullet, or round after round. Um, I just found it was a bit, just a bit catchy here and there. But, you know, it, something you get used to, and I'm sure it'd wear in a little bit anyway. But uh, just a fun, fun little rifle carbine, car, rifle stroke carbine. <laughs> Uh, to use you know uh, on the range I suppose you could use this for hunting as well uh, well you definitely could 357 Magnum um, I would imagine in uh, some countries where you shoot wild boar this thing would, uh, would certainly be the ideal bit of kit if you wanted to uh, stay traditional I mean Chiapa do do loads of different uh, flavors of this you know, you can get the Alaskan uh, takedown one. I'll try and get hold of one of them, give you a full review. Um, that's basically sort of stainless steel and uh, synthetic stock. And it's 
obviously stripped down, bit of a survival rifle, so to speak. Um, so that's a great, great gun. Like I said, I'll try and get hold of one of them, give you a full review of that. But I just thought it'd be nice to do something a little bit traditional. You know, we like I said, we did run this in our bit of a run and gun cowboy thing that we did. It was just a bit of fun, guys, you know, nothing serious. Um, but uh, yeah, just a fun rifle to use, you know, and it just feels solid. Um, it's so pointable, really comfortable as well in the shoulder. You know, so lightweight, it's, it's untrue. It's uh, just really lightweight and well balanced as well. You know, and these are quite a good price as well when you compare them to something like a Rossi. Um, I'll put the latest price of this uh, rifle in the details of the video and where you can get it. Um, I don't like to say prices on camera because it could be out of date in like a month's time. So I'll put the details of that in the video. Um, and obviously when it's in the details of the video I can make adjustments to it as and when prices change. Um, but uh, just a great, great little rifle, guys. Like I said, I'm not a, a big fan of lever action rifles, but yeah, I've had some good fun with this. You know, it pretty doesn't get as minimalistic as that, you know, and traditional as that. But if you're into your cowboy stroke western sort of stuff, uh, this would be a nice addition to your collection, I'm sure. But, uh, really cool, really cool little rifle. Good looking as well, really good looking. Anyway guys, I think I've covered everything. Uh, anything I've missed, I'll throw in the details of the video. Um, but, uh, oh, I'll tell you what we can look at before I forget. The manual, we did touch on that. Uh, I've not got the box here, it's just basically a cardboard box, but the manual's not bad. Um, you know, it's, it's black and white, tells you all your sort of do's and don'ts. Um, and then here's the, uh, I can get to it and turn the page. That's all the specs of the different models that they do. And that's this one here is the carbine. Uh, that's the product code if you need it. 357 Magnum one, if you can see it. Do in all sorts of different uh, calibers. So plenty to go up there. Yeah, and then moving along. Diagrams of the rifle. And sort of how to strip it down. If you've got one that'll strip down, I'm not going to strip this one down though. It is quite good uh, detail in this. You can get the octagonal barrels as well. It just reminded me there, that diagram. Told you how to adjust the sights. How to get into the magazine, unscrew everything. It just, you know, pretty much everything you need to know. Troubleshooting, uh, exploded diagram there of all the uh, bits and pieces. So not a bad, uh, not a bad manual, to be honest, for this uh, this rifle. And then a parts list as well. So yeah, not a bad manual at all. That's it then, guys. That's your rack and low review of the Chiapa 1892 Carbine Classic. Pretty much a reproduction of the Winchester 1892. Real nice rifle stroke carbine. Like I said, this one is in 357 Magnum. Available in all sorts of different flavour calibers. 44 Magnum, 45 ACP, etc, etc. But real, real fun lever action rifle. That keeps things traditional. Anyway guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let's rack and load. See ya.